December 5th, Sunday. Uh, 8 o'clock. Without a doubt, that's the time displayed on my cell phone. Having been scolded by mari san for working too late, and having pushed myself to finish examining the massive pile of stuff she'd passed me, I found the whole affair really contradictory, and by the time I got home, it was already six o'clock. It's Sunday today. It's the sole detestable day of the week for me, given that I have a lot of free time that I don't know what to do with. That's why I worked until I almost passed out last night, barely managing to fall into a sleep so deep I couldn't even dream. And yet... Ah, Kidahara speaking. What happened to trample upon my day off, where I didn't need to think about anything, was a call from the city, but I didn't recognize the number. I should be asking you that. Are you okay? What wakes me up is the voice of an elderly man who sounds like he's in even worse shape than me. Wow, I really can't thank you enough, Kid Hara-san. Things are looking pretty bad. The part-timers from last month all resigned, and now even the branch manager broke his hip. I heard. Well, he's at that age, after all. Exactly. We're not even sure he'll recover by the end of the year. I thought it was hopeless. Goody's Restaurant. Minami Suetsugo Branch. A family restaurant around a ten-minute walk away from the station. I'm at it, given that it's a ten-minute walk from Hojo University as well. About three-tenths of the customers here consists of our university or the high school students. If only that was the whole story. Don't use those puppy dog eyes on me. I agreed to help only for today. Eh, no way. If that's the case, how are we supposed to stay open starting tomorrow? Don't just leave everything to some guy that resigned half a year ago. You've already been the kitchen manager for two years now, right? Sitting in the branch manager's seat with distress written all over his face is the kitchen manager, Seto. I can't really deny that, but your resignation was really tough on the rest of us. We were in pretty bad shape even after getting three more people. The branch manager aside, he's the one with the most experience here. Not to mention... He's two years older than me. Despite all that, though, this slightly cowardly acting manager still speaks so politely to me. I left it all in the manual, didn't I? The way I see it, four people should be enough to run this place. Although, I don't remember if I started speaking casually with him before or after he switched to being so polite. Well, having someone strict around really is the key to success. Everyone loosened up too much after you left, Kidahara san. I wouldn't go as far as to call him useless, but leaving him to manage the store by himself does worry me quite a bit. Then just be strict with them. Aren't you a full fledged employee? You want to live up to that role, don't you? I can't just talk to them like that. The branch manager doesn't even say anything most of the time. And that sense of worry happens to intensify, particularly when we have conversations like this. Ugh. I was working here from the start of my second year until the spring of the third, so about a year in total. Since I got really comfortable with the job after that, I didn't feel tired no matter how hard I pushed myself. That's why I came here, where it always seemed busy no matter what time of day it was. But, in the end, some complicated stuff happened, and I quit about half a year ago. Morn- uh, Kidahara-san? Ah, Honda. Good to see you. I'm just here today to- Oh no, I'm so sorry for being five minutes late. I'll get ready immediately. Uh, no, I wasn't really, uh... <sighs> 
I'm pretty sure he's also a second year who started working around a year ago. There was one instance where he was late for his shift and I attempted a single gentle conversation with him, but... That guy never shows me that kind of respect. I don't care. I promised the branch manager that I'd help out only for today. Well, I did hear that from the branch manager myself, too. Then don't try to scare me like that. Well, after I heard you were coming back, I couldn't help but get my hopes up, kidahara san I thought that perhaps the terrible state this place is in would make you unable to walk away. I have to start job hunting soon, you know. I totally understand. We actually have a new recruit coming in today. I was hoping you could give her some training. Ah, so that's what's going on. You guys really have no one to spare, huh? We can just barely handle Sundays with the five of us. So we can't really have the time to take care of a newcomer. Good morning. Wow, it really is you, Kidahara-san. Welcome back. Nakagawa-san, it's been a while. Oh, you're a lifesaver. When I heard the branch manager collapsed, I thought we'd be finished for sure. Terribly sorry, floor manager. Oh, no, I'm just going to be supervising the training for today. That's all. No worries, no worries. I already know how big of a revolution we're about to go through. Oh, but go easy on the new girl, okay? We really can't afford to lose anyone today. I see Nakagawa-san is still here. I'm starting to see a little more hope for this place. All of the female part-timers here listen only to her. She's a vocational school student a year younger than me, who started three months before I left. This might be a little disrespectful to Sato, but I do remember her as the most useful staff member here, apart from the manager, and the one who best understood my reign of terror while I was still working here. And what I liked most about her was how she saw me as nothing more than just a co-worker, and how straightforward she was with me when we talked. That reminds me, uh, where's Tanaguchi-san? Oh, it hadn't even been a week after you left that she ended up leaving too. I see. She was popular with many of the customers, so her leaving dealt us a pretty heavy blow. To think she'd just stop coming without even saying anything. <sighs> Sorry, Sato. That's definitely due to all that uh, complicated stuff. Now then, there's only about an hour until we open. The new girl has been here for about an hour, so I'll introduce you two. Oh, that's pretty early for the first day. She's got a good work ethic. I was responsible for her interview, see? She takes everything incredibly seriously. Threw about 30 minutes worth of questions at me afterward. That's impressive. Honestly, I almost thought she was your sister or something, Kidahara-san. Uh, how exactly did you reach that conclusion? She's a third year at Hojo High, so even if she's not your sister, she does happen to be your underclassman, Kidahara-san. Most of the part-timers here are related to our schools in one way or another. I think her last name was Sugi... Uh, Sugi... Uh, Sugi Mira? No. It sounds a little off. Oh, no. Goody's Restaurant, Minami Setsugo Branch. A family restaurant located around a 10 minute walk from the station. While I'm at it, given that this is a 10 minute walk from the Hosho University as well, about three tenths of the customer here consist of our university or the high school students. Also, since it's a 10 minute walk from the university, about half of the part-timers here consists of our university or the high school students. Uh. Uh? Ah. Oh, what the hell? Hold it, Sato. What's the meaning of this? Kitchen manager? What's going on here? Ignoring the fact that I have no clue what's going on here either for a second, why are you both taking it out on me? What a stroke of horrible luck. Sorry for the wait. Here's your cheeseburger combo and a mixed pizza. 
The tray is still hot, so please be careful. The tomato spaghetti and carbonara are ready. Let me confirm your order. A clubhouse sandwich, the one beef curry, and two drinks, correct? The drink bar is that way. Thank you very much. Your total comes to 2,580 yen. Your change comes to 2,420 yen. We supplied the drink bar and the iced coffee and the ice cubes too. Hmm. For example, if you needed a half done almond rice, you'd press this button. If you needed two, hmm, as the fierce battles, both here and in the kitchen, take their course, we reach the second half of the lunch rush. Then, after you confirm the order, press this button, and finally this button to send it over. <laughs> I remain at a corner in the hall with my new part-timer, while Hojo High's third-year student, Sugira Koharu, so as not to get in anyone's way. With this, the order will be sent to the kitchen, and you can then take the next customer's order afterwards. And so, training her in utilizing the data terminal to input t taken orders is progressing smoothly at present. <sighs> or at least that's what I would like to say. Are you listening? She's probably listening. She's also visibly irritated. Is she willing to listen to the instructions of a man who broken down in the worst way possible during his first meeting with him? And who also happened to run away from their second encounter while entrusting someone else to deal with her? I have no doubt that this girl absolutely despises me right now, even as I enumerate these steps to her. Now then, practice time. Mixed fried food combo, a Caesar salad, honey toast, a mango parfait, a coffee float, and two drinks. But with that said, the one who wanted to work here is none other than herself. And it just so happens that I'm the one in charge of her training. Good work. Letting your own preferences affect your work performance would be nothing but trouble for the employer is what I'd like to say. Not only was she listening, she also picked it up extremely quickly. To think she can use it this early after only a single demonstration. If you consider her talent alone, she has the potential to be the store's finest. She takes her training seriously, gives it her best efforts, and understands everything perfectly. Someone every pupil should aspire to be like. But uh, the irritated look on this pupil's face is a little troubling for me as a mentor. All right, let's move on to the next. This will do. Uh? I'm more than prepared for the real deal. Further training would be a waste of time. And so first words out of her mouth after about an hour seem to fundamentally reject our weird mentor-pupil relationship. You were just here to supervise my training, correct? In that case, thanks for your hard work. You're dismissed. That, and I can only describe the attitude she's taking when it comes to cooperating with me as having very obvious dark clouds hanging over her head. Well now, if you don't lighten up that expression of yours a little, greeting the customers might be a little- You've also greeted guests before in the past, haven't you, senpai? It, yeah, I basically took on whatever position was short on people. Then there's no problem. Uh, I forcibly hold back my urge to start lecturing her. Even then, the attitude she's taking with me is unmistakably a consequence of the attitude I've taken with her in the past. Are you sure you're going to be okay? Of course. That said, I can't deny that the issue of her amiability around others might just resolve itself whenever I'm not right in front of her, just as she's implying. Still, that alone isn't enough to conclude that she's ready for the job. Nakagawa-san! 
Yeah, coming, coming, coming. The lunch rush is just starting to ease up. Our floor manager, who's relieved that she can take a breather now, is fanning herself with a spare tray as she walks our way. What's up, manager? I'm not the manager. I'm not even the kitchen manager. I tell her to watch her sluggish attitude a little, but now's not the time for that. Let's have her work at the hall for the bit. Let's see, let's do 30 minutes? Eh? What? Just as expected, the two of them stare at me with dissatisfied expressions. The reasons behind them, however, are completely different. Please hold on a second. What do you mean only 30 minutes? Can we really send her out? Won't she bother the others? The responses are also, of course, completely opposite from one another. I do think we need to cut someone down to size, a certain someone's ego in particular. <laughs> I even asked you to go easy on the new girl. Furthermore, both of these well-honed instincts seem to be able to sense that I am clearly provoking a certain someone. That was pretty harsh. What, did she really annoy you so much? Don't worry. This won't be enough to bring her down, I guarantee it. I speak from plenty of experience. S stop looking down on me like that, please? Okay, okay. Alright, Kohoru-chan. Why don't you give it a little go and we'll see if you can handle it, shall we? But I just said... Sorry about this. I'll take over once her training's done. I might mess up more because it's been a while since I last did this, though. Could you please stop that already? <sighs> Why don't we call it a day here? The evening shift is about to arrive, right? Yeah, I can let you go now. See? You're not rusty at all, kidahara san Come on, just come back. Nope, I absolutely can't. My knees have been on the brink of giving out for quite some time now. That's got less to do with your hiatus than it does with your age. Uh, good work today. <sighs> Having received the warm words of gratitude from both of the authorities, I unsteadily walk back behind the counter. <clears throat> it's not that I feel my stamina as a whole has gone down. But a job where I'm standing all day really hurts my leg muscles since I haven't been using them a lot lately. Well, leaving that aside for now. So, what do you think? Uh -huh. For the time being, I stand beside Sugira Koharu, whose pride has been put to rest as planned, and whose expression finally befits a Japanese person. In any case, I'd like you to stay here a little longer and observe the others and how they work a little more. <sighs> the instant she stepped into the hall, the steady workflow that everyone was trying so hard to maintain simply collapsed. How to show customers to a table, and which one it should be, how to move around appropriately when you're not being called for, and conversely, what to prioritize when you have multiple things to do. Each and every one of her actions ended up hindering the other staff in some way, disrupted the pace of our customers, and ended up causing her to make mistakes herself. There are quite a few other things I want you to know too, but well, you can pick up the details as you go. She later mixed up the orders, made even more mistakes, and caused further inconveniences for the customers. You're a smart girl, so you'll probably get it in just another day or so. You'll be able to go to work in the hall normally after that. Mm -hmm. I called for a retreat just 20 minutes in. She's a clever girl, so she immediately realized the extent of her abilities took a step back, and accepted my assistance. That act alone really made me feel like she's actually not your ordinary worker. Well, with another two or three tries, you'd be a great asset. I'd say you were a great find for the store. 
Well, I can only hope that she actually does something about her friendliness, though. Mm -hmm. She still hasn't responded to anything I've said, still holding an irritated expression, never even facing me. Even so, she's clearly acting differently than she was earlier in the day when she refused to look at me. She's paying close attention whenever I give her specific instructions. Are your shifts only on the weekends? Until the winter break, yeah. Once the break starts, I'll be coming every day. I see. That's why if I ask her a proper question, she'll give me a proper, albeit indifferent, answer. Your next shift is the following Saturday, then? Would it be fine if I don't come? That's not really something I get to decide anyway. Tr true. It's not like I can really give a statement saying her training's over right now. But then, what should I do? I initially agreed to working today and today only. If I keep sticking by her, it'll affect my studies and my job at the publishing company. But even so, I should at least look at the scheduled shifts before leaving her by herself. <sighs> Stuck in this awkward, uneasy atmosphere, the two of us quietly observed the store's activities for a while. Well then, if you'll excuse me, good work today! We'll see you next Saturday then. Yes, sir? In the end, it wasn't until two hours later that I could get my hands on the evening shift schedule. After all that happened, she mostly kept quiet, bade Nakagawa-san farewell, hurriedly changed out of her uniform, and gave everyone a deep bow. Well, good work today. Do your best next time, too. <laughs> Not sure what to do after seeing her so depressed for the first time. I do my best to give a few words of encouragement and... <clears throat> Ow! A fist from the floor manager. Uh. What? And a knee from the kitchen manager. This is all your fault. You made this mess. Now clean it up. I should normally be staring back at these irrational words written across their faces. Um, excuse me, uh, Sugira-san? Yeah? I'll take you to the sta- No, thank you. Uh, I can feel a sharp sting in her words. Nevertheless, these two continued to stare daggers at me. She did say no thank you. Mm. Mm. Chase after her. Will you take responsibility if she does not come back next week? I'll go with her fine. I just have to cheer her up, right? Must your expression scream so loudly at me? After all, I'm just someone the manager dragged in as a trainee supervisor for the day. Mm. I'll be off now. During times like these, silence speaks louder than words. They've long since mastered this strategy of mine. Sugira-san! Hey, Sugira-san! Mm. About 30 seconds after I dashed out the door, I spotted her small figure. There was no difference in her speed before and after I found her to clearly express that she was neither waiting for nor running away from me. I should see you off after all, at least until the station. Mm. I don't hear a no thank you this time. Just like when we were still working, if I'm not looking for a direct answer, she's content with just saving her breath. Which also means she's realized that I'll be following her regardless of what she says. Therefore, the atmosphere right now is not one of rejection, but closer to that of resignation. Are you tired? I haven't done anything that would tire me out. The proof being, when I do ask her a question like this, she'll hide her emotions as much as possible and tell me exactly what I need to know, but nothing more. <sighs> The two of us walked side by side through the streets at night. The streets from goodies to the station are bustling with people. To be honest, 
There isn't really a good reason for me to accompany her. Even so, the reason those two forced me to chase her was due to problems with my own attitude too, not just hers. Why are you trying to work at this time of year? Because I'm going on a graduation trip. I tried to strike up a conversation with her, but it seems like she interpreted it as me simply looking for an answer from her as well. A graduation trip, huh? Are you going with your classmates? There's four of us in total. Ako and Sayuri and Mihoko as well. Ah, her emphasis on the last name she mentioned didn't appear to be done with the intention of hitting a nerve. The proof being her lowered voice when saying her name and the slightly downcast expression on her face right now. I, I see. If you're already planning your graduation trip, that means you've already got a recommendation, right? I have? For the literature department? Eh? What do you mean, eh? Uh, N no way. The same regular program in high school. The same department in university. She really is the epitome of junior of mine. So, so you're working to pay for your trip, huh? Your parents can't pay for you? We're an average middle-class family. The other girl's parents seem to be paying for them, though. I, I see. I'm going to a private high school was really tough on my parents, too. It's all because I said I wanted to go to Hojo High no matter what. Uh-huh. Even so, asking them to give me a small increase in my allowance just so I can enjoy myself? I really can't bring myself to ask them that, even if I don't require a big sum. She's from a normal family. A rare case amongst the students from Hojo High. She's a working student precisely because she's in a school for the privileged. <sighs> I did think that her personality, to an irritating extent, was too similar to a certain someone's. But to think that her family situation would be so similar to a certain someone else's as well, Anyway, uh, good work today. Oh, uh, thank you. Our chatter-filled walk continued for another ten minutes, and eventually brought us to Minami Suetsuko Station. I, um, I might have been a little more strict with you than I should have today, but... No, I should apologize too. I'm sorry for acting so arrogantly back there. Eh, uh, but... Those ten minutes of chatter definitely weren't wasted. In the end, I had a bit of bad impression of you, senpai. Oh, that's to be expected. I took such a terrible attitude with you, after all. As our chatter continues, the overly negative impressions we had of each other slowly start to fade. Even so, that doesn't justify the attitude I had during work. I'm really sorry. Sugira-san, we've accepted each other's mistakes and are slowly building up the courage to strengthen our relationship. Could you please forgive me? There's nothing to forgive, but I forgive you. Thank you very much. Uh, the instant I said, I forgive you, I could actually feel something from her smile for the very first time, as if to mock the, there's nothing to forgive you for, so I won't forgive you situation that's been tearing at me for three years. My reconciliation with this girl came in a mere instant. It was that simple. In a mere instant. If I can be like this with someone else, then what in the world is going on between me and her right now. And, um, one more thing? Oh, what is it? Now that we accept and respect each other, it's only natural that our mutual habit of meddling in other people's business 
starts to rear its head. Besides, right about then, while I was listening to her, I was tending to the wounds in my heart for the first time in a long while. Please don't cause your girlfriend any more grief. I'll do something about Mihoko myself. Uh, that's why. Although what she said coincided perfectly with the thoughts going through my mind, I couldn't even think straight enough to identify who she meant by girlfriend. Why do you always have to dig up topics that are already settled? You're three years older than me, aren't you? You're not even mature enough to just calmly take my advice? That's because you keep poking your head into places I don't want you in. That's because you haven't been telling the truth. You hid the fact that you had a girlfriend from Mihoko. I never said anything like that. It's all because you're so indecisive that things have gotten so overcomplicated. Don't just draw your own conclusions, then take it all out on me. This is a huge misunderstanding. Again, with the plain dumb, are you intending to make not just Mahoko, but your girlfriend cry as well? Don't talk to me like you know everything. After that, the argument between the impatient university student and the overly nosy high school student became so heated that they drowned out the noise of the busy street around them. And with a, like hell I'll ever talk to you again, from both parties, the two went their separate ways. Even though they'll probably see each other again soon enough. December 6th, Monday. After finishing the fourth and final lecture today, I've since walked for about 10 minutes. Words like, it's been three years, or it really takes me back, seem too mundane for this scenery. It's just that I find the ages and the uniforms of the students rushing home in the opposite direction to be somewhat nostalgic. Well, I guess the very fact that I'm contemplating on how I've grown older makes me sound like a middle-aged man. Now then. Peeking at my watch, I see that it's 3.40. I'm a bit early, but... Uh, huh? The instant I turn towards the buildings, whether it be by probability, expectation, or more than anything, by fate, a certain someone who I was sure I'd be meeting here eventually was standing right in front of me with a surprised expression, just as I expected. Are you here to see me by any chance? And what makes you think that? I was just wondering if you were looking to apologize is all for saying mean things to me, for abandoning your position as my trainer, or maybe for showing up at my workplace in the first place? I don't think I'm in the wrong for any of the things you've just mentioned, though. Not even in the slightest. And you even have a girlfriend? No, that has nothing to do with this. So, you do have one after all? You were lying when you said you didn't have one? I only said that has nothing to do with this. I never said anything about not having one, not even once. And, as always, we get along like the same poles of two magnets coming together. Mihoko did come to school for a day a while back, but she stopped coming again recently, you know? All because she found out you were lying to her? Don't spread slander like that around. While I'll admit that the attitude I took with her wasn't the best, I can at least guarantee I haven't lied to her. But then, your girlfriend? I don't have a girlfriend. I don't even date girls in the first place. I don't have the right to. The right to? I have no idea what you're talking about. 
All I'm hearing from you are desperate excuses for why you're distancing yourself from Mihoko. If you can't understand it, then don't disregard everything I said so easily. If you want me to understand, shouldn't you be explaining it in a way that is understandable? Isn't that what you call being sincere? Don't bring up sincerity so lightly. Just who am I supposed to be sincere to here? To Mihoko, of course. And if you could put it in a way that can satisfy me as well, then we probably wouldn't have had this argument in the first place. Isn't it your own fault that you're angry? That's all because you kept popping up in front of me and provoking me over and over and over again, senpai. And those were all coincidences. I never actually wanted to meet you on my own volition. I suppose I understand her frustration to a certain extent, though. So, what business do you have with me today? Did you just coincidentally get hired as our substitute teacher or something? Substitute teaching comes next year. I do want to get a teaching permit, though. Oh, that's good. I'll have graduated by then, so I guess I won't be seeing you in class. On the other hand, we'll be walking around the same campus from then on. Do I really get this irritating when I talk to someone? Game set and match. I'll see you around. Eh? Wait, hold on a second. I'm not finished yet. I have an appointment in the faculty room at 4 o'clock. I can't be late now, can I? Isn't it past 4 o'clock already? It's common sense to be there 5 minutes before an appointment. Exactly. Well, that's all for today. Ah. Uh, finally have gotten her permission. I turn around and hurry to the buildings. I said wait. Weren't you here to apologize to me, senpai? I don't believe I said I had any business with you in the first place. Then why did you even come here? Don't tell me you were just using me to kill time. Feeling a slight sense of superiority having outwitted her, while also holding in a considerable amount of dissatisfaction, she really thinks I'm the one at fault for last week's incident, huh? <sighs> What's his problem? Coming over and getting me more and more wound up than just running away? Hey, Sugiera. What? I'll have you know I'm in a terrible mood right now. That was Kitahara-san just now, right? Ah, uh, I do think that's his last name, yes, but I totally don't have even a single bit of interest in that whatsoever. Do you know each other? Not a chance. How about you? Do you guys know each other? Yeah, he's my sister's boyfriend. Is that so? Please send my condolences to... Ogiso? Is your sister's last name Izumi? I don't think my family has any complex issues like that, no. That son of a- Really now, you got a job at a publishing company, Kitahara. I never thought you'd be interviewing me one day. Oh no, it's only a part-time job for now. I'll be graduating next year. A reunion with my slightly fussy guidance counselor. Oh, I see. But it does take me back. You were at the top of your grade and gave a speech during the entrance ceremony after being accepted here, right? I remember it like it was yesterday. Thank you very much. Doing nothing but fondly reminiscing about the past, he does test my patience a bit. You made the graduation ceremony speech too. Didn't you, Kidahara? You held on to your place as the top of the class for all three. This was something. I didn't exactly come here to reminisce about the past. And besides, I fell out of the top ten during the last set of finals. But he's probably forgotten unpleasant memories like that. Oh, that's right, that's right. Last week's Kyle Graph sparked a huge conversation here in the faculty room too. 
The truth is, the response to my interview request as Kitahara from Kyograph was awfully fast. Even for the prestigious music program of Hojo High, which has produced many successful alumni, this award could still be considered an extraordinary accomplishment. Making a name for herself in Europe, huh? Quite a big deal, really. Toma is really doing her best out there, isn't she? In a faraway place that I know nothing of. Is she gritting her teeth as she works her heart out? Or is she humming a tune without a care in the world? Has she gotten used to living abroad? Does she even miss Japan? Or perhaps she's already forgotten how to converse in Japanese already. Has she completely thrown away all her memories of this country? Has she already forgotten all about me? She sure had made our school proud. Truly worthy of being called the finest student to ever enroll in the music program. Excuse me? Having had my thoughts trail off to the distant unknown for a little while, I'm now incapable of following the active conversation I'm having with the man before me. She might have Tomoyoko's blood in her veins, but the excellent education she received must have played a part as well. Still, helping Tomasan spread her wings and fly into the world was none other than Hojo High School Music Program's age-old tradition, along with its spectacular guidance. Tomasan, Oh, addressing the alumni with honorifics is normal, right? Oh yeah, do you know about the piano music room too? She treasured it during her days here, and it was in fact a donation from her mother. Yeah, I know about that, of course. We've had strong connections with Toma Yoko for many years. After all, sending Toma Yoko herself into the world was also none other than... Sensei? Huh? What is it? She was quite the troublemaker would probably be a better hit with the readers. Ah, ha 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 You got me there, Kitahara. Yeah, just like you said, she really was something else. Indeed. I interrupt Sua Sensei's over embellished praise because somehow I feel like his words are a complete denial of the memories that I'm incapable of erasing for good. Um, geniuses are often a little tough to deal with. Still, I suppose the old days have become quite nostalgic now, huh? Is that so? It's only been three years, but it feels like it's been forever. The pride of the music program? A prodigy born from a blessed background? Who exactly are you referring to? The Toma I know isn't some high and mighty noble, fit to always bask in the brilliance of the sun. She was someone who was even labeled as the model underachiever having enrolled in the music program only to barely even graduate after transferring to the regular program. She couldn't make a single friend in her first year, and made enemies of her entire class during the next. And as for her final year, a lot happened. She was often late, absent without reason, and slept in class. Neither her classmates nor her teachers wanted anything to do with her, the biggest offender of which is standing before me right now. Even so, because of the aloof, unconcerned way she presented herself, as well as her elegant looks, no one could actually discover just how lonely she was deep down. Oh, uh, speaking of which, Kadahara, I'm sure you'll cover that particular topic, right? Particular topic? You know, the high school festival's live performance. Weren't you in on it too, Kidahara? Ah, that thing? Was I now? It wasn't really a big deal. Once again, I can't keep up with how he switches from one topic to the next. Wasn't it a huge success? Rumors of that still flood the halls whenever the festival comes around. Is that right? But... This time, even if I try to dodge it little by little, it's still too sensitive of a topic for me to have been prepared for. 
I believe the student council still has a recording of it on DVD somewhere. I'll have them give you a copy later. Uh, thank you for your concern, but there's no need for that, I think. Really? I thought it was pretty interesting, though, to think that the prodigal pianist once played the trumpet and guitar at some high school festival. It was the Saxon bass, you mean. I suppose it's in the school's best interests for me to write about something like that. After all, that was the only school event she ever took part in. Thanks for watching. Please do all the things that makes the algorithm happy. <sighs> the unreliability of eyewitnesses, especially three years later. Research has shown that what you remember can be heavily influenced by outside factors. Like, if everybody says that Toma is a great student for the school, the teachers who were there might start believing it anyway and conforming their memories to that. They might not even realize that they're doing it. So, I'm not sure if the guidance counselor realizes he is lying or not. This is why eyewitness testimony is the least reliable of evidence. <laughs>